Hello from the Clayton County Library System. This is Amanda with Riverdale Branch Library. We're here with Healing Arts today. We have a great subject. It's John Lewis for Black History Month. He has did so much for us just as Georgians. Um, I got a few quick tips for when you're painting someone who's not in or who's not sitting for you. And you, you may want to do an inspiration wall or a board. Um, get different pictures of them from different angles because as you're painting, you want to see where the shadows hit them in different places. And that's about it. You could keep it in a folder, um, but I would suggest putting it up where you can see it as you paint. That actually helps. And this is John Robert Lewis. I got a few quick facts about him. He was... An American politician, of course, a civil rights movement leader, and he served in the United States House of Representatives for Georgia um, and from 1987 until 2020. What a great career. Okay, so this is what we're going for. So I'm going to set this over here. And of course, we have our blank canvas. And we're doing acrylic. So I have water here. Two cups, so I don't muddle the colors. I have my brushes and my acrylic paints, which we have the bottled ones that, of course, we can use just as easily, the ones in the tube. And I got my nice meditation music. So also, with here with my canvas, which, of course, you could use a paper or a poster board, I do have a pencil. Because what I'm going to do first is kind of lay out where I'm going to be painting. Um, I don't want his head in the center because I don't think that that adds um, enough interest. So let's do him to either the left or the right. I'm going to do him over here to my right side. So I'm going to take about one third of the canvas and I'm just going to come straight down with a pencil. We want to do it kind of light because we are going to paint over this. From there, I'm going to think about where would his shoulder be to his head ratio. So I'm going to come up maybe one third from the bottom and go across. And then we're going to start with just an oval for his face. The cool thing about Mr. Lewis is he did have a bald head, so that's going to be awesome when we're painting. It's actually going to help us out. Um, let's do, since we're doing, I'm doing it from this side, let's have his, him looking kind of this way. So we're going to come down and take our line and do a small, almost loose C down the front. And then we're going to come over and do where his eyes are going to be, his nose, and maybe his mouth. This isn't like in cement. We are going to move this around, but this is just to give us a starting off point. From here, we're going to come down and do kind of a neck and pull out into a shoulder. So there we go, we got that kind of form. All right, so let's start with a small V right here. This is gonna be where his nose will be. And then we're gonna come down and come up to this line and we're gonna draw in a small, he has kind of um, smaller eyes that don't open as big. So we're gonna do almost an almond shaped eye. Like I said, these are kind of like um, placeholders. As we see in some of his pictures, he has um, puffiness around the bottom of his eyes. So I'm going to take that and come up. We're going to add just as much character as you can get in from looking at his pictures. Any little character that you can put in is actually going to help us get more of a realistic painting. 
Now I'm going to come up and there's his, his brow line. And he's got kind of like a little um, knitted brow where he's thinking. Okay. And now we're going to come here to his lip line and we're going to add the top lip. We're going to go down into like an M. And we're only going to come out to where we have those outer um, nostril. And then go back in. Come back around and there is his mouth. Now we see um, also he's got like this, um, this chin that comes in. So we're going to take from where the mouth is and you're going to come down and we're going to add that definition of that chin, okay? And then he comes back down. And this is also um, him being older, as you can see, of course, you could take it, he's so famous, we've got pictures of him all the way from when he was in the civil rights movements in the 60s. So if you wanted to do a picture of him when he's younger, make sure to get all pictures of him when he's younger, you know, in the same kind of age range. Okay, we're gonna come back and add this jaw coming down here. And let's see, this comes up a little bit more. Let's find that top of his head, and it's going to come down, and let's put in his ears, which are aligned with this, the end of his nose. And then where they stop right at it or start right at his eye line. Okay, and then we're gonna come over here, and you can only see a part of that ear. So we're gonna do a small down to the end of his nose. All right, Mr. Lewis looked great in suits and he wore a lot of suits for his profession. So let's go ahead and kind of put him in a suit. So we are going to, his, his body is this way, he's looking this way. So we're gonna have his suit come down and here's his collar, come down. And there's the other side. I'm gonna put the tip of his tie back. So, we're going to come back and get more in depth of this, but what we're going to do is put this down and we're going to start doing our background. I decided to do it in different shades of blue, so I've got this nice, blue right here. And we'll do a little green blue. You got about two or three, at least two. But I'm going to do three different colors going on in this background to add some interest. So let's get a deeper blue, too. That's almost the same color. Oh, here's a light one. We'll go with this light one. Okay, so as you can see, I got three different blues going on. I'm going to take a brush and wet my brush. Now I'm going to go straight in. One color blue, and I'm just going to tap different colors of this stain all over the background. It looks kind of like it's smelling blue randomly 
tap it in. We are going to come back and get this nice and blended with the other colors. Okay. So not only on my inspiration board do I put like just pictures of Mr. Lewis, but I also have quotes because when you're painting somebody, you kind of want to learn a little bit about them and get some of their um, essence in there. So now I'm going into the lighter. I didn't wash out my brush because they are going to be blended, but I'm not putting it on top of where I already painted. I'm going in between. And also, I'm doing it at a different angle. All of these little things are going to add a lot more interest to the background once we get it blended. So you want to put a lot of paint on your brush too because by the you don't want it to be completely dried out when you go back to blend it you want it to still be blendable and we're working with acrylics here and not oils if oils we wouldn't have to worry about it because they take a longer time to dry but acrylics dry fast so sometimes you have to work a little bit faster or add more paint to your brush so now we're going into that third color and back into a different angle and now i'm going to start going in and just filling in all my gaps here blending it but working it different angles Pull side to side, up and down. Now, once we get closer to our subject, we're going to go in and not be so carefree. We want to be right on the edge because we don't want to pull this paint. And it's okay if you get it in there, but we're going to try not to. We can work with it if it does go there. We can just cover it up, but it's easier if we don't have to deal with that. So we're going to just try and be pretty neat when we get close to our subject. But everywhere else, you can just be willy-nilly. If you add enough um, paint to your brush, you could actually do a whole cool textural painting just like this. Okay. So just different ways as we fill in our gaps. The cool thing about this technique too is if you miss a place and you're like painting your subject and later you're like, oh, I didn't get that fully, it's so easy just to go back to all over top of it. It'll blend in even after it's dry. And that's the fun about doing something a little abstract, is there is no right and wrong. Thank you. 
Okay, I need a little bit more paint, but I don't want to put my paintbrush in water because I don't want it to get, um, I don't want it to be thinner than this. I still want the thickness. So I'm going to hold it while I get a little bit more of this dark green going. I got plenty of the other glues. Now, when you're thinking about your background color, um, if the person, if you're doing a person, or whatever is in the foreground, you remember that you want the background color to be complementary to what's in the foreground. And a good way to do that, or an easier way, I mean, there's so many formulas for color, but an easy way to do that is to go on the color wheel and whatever, like, let's say we're putting um, Mr. Lewis in a purple tie, you would go and whatever the opposite of purple is what you would want to do your background. And that's just an easy way to create interest through color. Now, I do like some um, tone-on-tone -tone paintings. And tone-on-tone -tone is big for 2020-2021, too. But if you have problems with picking out your colors, that's always an easy formula to go to that you can use is whatever is opposite of the color you're using on the color wheel.
almost done. And then we're going to go into the outlining of Mr. Lewis. And when we do that, we're going to do a darker color because I found it's always better to go darker when you're painting, especially in acrylics, because you can always lighten it up so much easier, but it's harder to go back and put in shadows. Unlike with oil painting, it's a little bit easier to go back in and put in shadows, but with this acrylic, if you go ahead and go with the shadows, you can make it lighter and layer on top. And it looks a bit more real. Mm, I'm loving this texture in this. I don't know if that reads on camera, but that is awesome. Okay, we got a couple more. too much that's too much um neck showing off here so we're going to take this pencil and i'm going to go in at a different angle and that's another good thing about art is we can always change there's no way that you would have that much showing in an actual oxford shirt so i'm going to go back in and change my angles a little bit to bring this up and now we've got more tie, and we're also going to add the lapel of his jacket there. Bam. As long as you know what's going on, but see, I can see over my pencils, and I can see through there, because I want to, you want to make sure that you, that you know. Okay. So let's go in with a thinner brush. And we're not going to do black because we'll, we'll use that to crisp up the painting at the end. But I'm going to do a nice dark brown. And I'm going to mix that dark brown with this blue. So let me find me a nice, rich, pretty brown. Okay, here we go. It's an acrylic um, deep brown. And I'm going to take that brown and I'm going to mix it with the blue to make a darker color, but I don't want straight black. Okay. Because I'm going to use that black to go back in at the end of my painting and really crisp up some stuff like the irises and stuff. So we only, we want to, to get the darker tones but try not to use a black, a brown. Okay, so we're gonna go in and I'm gonna get this a little, put a little water on my brush because I want it inky. I want it to be able to flow really easily. Unlike the background where we wanted thickness, this we don't have to have so thick. We want it to be a nice medium thin, where it still covers in one um, brush stroke, but we don't want heaviness. So we're going to come back in. Um, I went over kind of that puffiness, and we're going to go into his kind of, just do an outline almost. But this is actually going to be covered up later. 
as we talked about. So, that, so it's kind of like an outline. Just to show us kind of what we're going to go ahead and do that here. Okay. And you can keep wet in your brush because this paint does like to dry up like we talked about. I'm going to come and do how he has a hooded eye, just like mine. So we're going to do that little hood there. And he's get, we'll do one in the corner here. Let's pull that chin out. Back up. Of course, the under part just goes straight into the deep brown. And then right under that chin, we're going to come down with some brown because that is a shadow there. And we'll let it go all the way up, getting smaller and smaller, angle it to the edge of his neck. Let's go into the, his nose and we're going to paint the two, his nostrils. So that's going to be the darkest place on his nose. And we may even you know, like loop them together. He's got a um, rounded part of the top of the nose. So we're going to do kind of a U. But then let's come back up. And you can almost see like the bulb of his nose. And then we're going to make a C on each opposite side of that nostril. And we're starting to see the nose develop. Take the brown and we're gonna pull it with a very slight W. Very, almost like when you're making a bird in the sky between his lips. Let's go ahead because these eyebrows are going to be dark and add a nice thicker line up here with this eyebrow. All this is probably going to be painted over in our second session when we really get deeper into his facial features. But we hold it as a marker and to add shadow. Okay. All right, so actually we're going to do some work on his um, suit. So we will use a little black now. I'm going to put a little black with my brown and blue. So tap that same color into the black, water it down. We want it really nice and inky. You want it to just glide across your canvas. If it's too thick, it gets stuck and you don't get that nice line. Okay, so we're gonna come up from where his um, neck is and we're gonna bring down, this is gonna be actually the collar first of his shirt. Let me see if I'm gonna rework this. I think I'm gonna rework it with my pencil. I need a collar. One more time. Third time to the time. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're going to come 
down with the lapel. This is going to be the lapel first. So here we go down. And then we're going to come straight down. I need to redo that line. There we go. And then this will come down. And I'm coming up. He needs more shoulder. So even though I painted that blue, the cool thing is this is all going to be a dark suit. So I'm coming up a little bit more. And that's the nice thing about painting is we can adjust as we go. And we're adding a little bit more shoulder. Now from there, from where his shoulder is, we're going to put a little rounded line that goes down and there's his arm. And now we're going to get the other side pulls up and here comes the lapel. shadow would be and around this arm we want to see the seam I want to come up here now I'm going to take this black and I'm going to take some of this blue and lighten it a little make a nice gray blue blue Gray. And we'll come in here and fill it in. So it won't be filled in with jet black. It'll be tone on tone. And you will pull out from the lapel to the end of your your um your shoulder.
Okay, and then of course we're going to blend it as we go. There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to kind of do, on this side, we're going to do a uh, darker tone because that side's in shadow. So, I go back and do that, but add more black to it than blue. Almost all black. Just the tiniest bit of blue for over here. Because that side is in shadow. Okay, let's go ahead and then, ooh, that was a little crooked, that's okay, I'll fix that. Come down, and we'll just outline that Oxford shirt in there. There we go. I feel like I need to bring that up, so let's bring that up, sorry. <laughs> Okay, and then I'll just do a little light outline of this tie. Okay. So we've got this shadow piece here. Let that dry. And I'm going to need some more black, and I'm going to need some more blue. Get that black out. Well, I think I can use a little bit of that. Huh? A little more. Ooh, okay. Okay, so now we're going to come back and do this side. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit lighter because we're gonna have light come in this way and hit his face, so the light would hit that. So we're gonna do a little bit more blue than black. More on the blue side. And what I do is I just take black and I just tap in blue until I get the tone or shade that I want. Just keep tapping it in. Just keep taking a little bit on the side of your brush and just tap it right in there. Mix it around. Okay, that's too blue. So let's go down. Let's go back and add a little more black to that. Okay, I like that. Just gray enough. Okay, so I filled it up. We're going to add a little bit more straight blood to around that line to regain that sharpness. And then we're going to do a little bit straight blood very close to this lapel. We're just going to add a little shadow there. Bam. Okay, and we can actually pull that out a bit. So it's not so. Bam. Okay. Now we're going to come in and do this lapel with the blue and the black shirt. I 
Okay, and um, we're going to do brush strokes from the top of the lapel down. And we're going to do it darker black uh, beginning from the back because that would be more in shadow. Then as we get up here, we may do a little bit more blue. Coming down here, we're going to go back into more black. So again, it's just like about thinking about where would the highlights be? Where would the shadows be? And all that kind of stuff helps with your painting. Now again, another thing, um, I, I think I said it before, but we'll talk about it again. This is acrylic, so it will dry. And as you can see, I said, like just at the beginning, we're gonna go darker first. So probably, you know, we're gonna come back and this, this is gonna have, we're gonna have a second session of Mr. Lewis's paintings. So I'm gonna show you more then, whereas we can go back and put more highlights in there. And so down here, I'm going to put more of the dark. Okay, that's nice and blended. So now we're coming over here to this lapel, and we're going to do kind of the same tonal. Um, it's going to hit the light more around closer to his face, and then as we go out, be darker. So we're gonna start over here with a more blue tone coming down and work our way blacker as we get to the other side of the lapel. So I'm actually going back and doing black on top of what we already did black. And then I'm going to give a different brush. And we're going to dip it just into the water. I'm going to see how much of this I can just pull down. And use it really thin as its own little highlighter. All right, so let's, as you see, I did this, um, the shadow here under his, his throat. Let's go and do his tie. 
So with his tie, I'm gonna go ahead with the dark black blue mixture, and we're gonna add just here and there little um, lines. And what that's gonna look like is flecks of the um, fabric when it's tied, okay? So we're gonna put a couple down here, and maybe a couple here, and you can do it any random way. We're adding just some depth. We're gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna come back with this purple and put a little bit of purple around it. Give them a nice purple tie. Normally I would let it dry. We are coming in close to the end of our class, so I'm just gonna kind of paint around it so you can still see. Now, instead of just a blocked off purple tie, we've got some interest that we can tell that the fabric is moving, it's been tied. And we'll go back later with a nice highlighting color, which may be pink, I'm thinking. Okay. All right, so now we've got our base color for our tie. We can do a little bit of, let's see what are we working with. We got a couple more minutes. White in here. And we're going to get this small brush that I've been working with, get this purple out of it. And go in with some of this blue-black into the white. We're going to make a gray. And come in here. to do the color of his shirt. And grays, different shades of grays. And then we're going to come back and put white over it. But the grays are just the shadows. And we're still thinking about where the light hits and where it would be lighter tones of gray. Like almost to the top, it's going to be almost white. undertone and put it here where the shirt is and it'll probably stay that way. I doubt we'll go back and kind of like that because that should be in more shadow. Oh, 
Okay. I see it forming. I see the face coming out. I hope you are feeling good about yours. Um, I think we did good today. If you got over the background done and then the um, the suit done and we started on our face. Now, one thing you can go ahead and start doing um, in between now and the next one that we do is if you want to take some more of your brown, get it really thin, and you can go in and trace around the rest of our face and head, you know, and start working on things that you know are going to be dark, like you could even put in the irises of his eyes because we know that they're going to be a dark brown, so we could kind of go ahead and pull those in. It's amazing how just doing their eyes really does set off a painting. Now we are going to have a sister program to this John Lewis. It'll be a genealogy program. And we have Mr. Franklin Walden from Riverdale who's going to tell us more about it. Hey. Hi. Thank you. Well, we have this genealogy workshop coming, which we're going to feature the family tree of John Lewis, Congressman. So uh, we want you to stay tuned in for that. And if you have any questions or are you planning on doing any genealogy research for your own family tree, just be sure to call us here at the Riverdale Library. Our number is 770-472-8100, and we'll be able to help you. Thank you, and I hope you guys had fun, and we'll see you um, next session for the rest of our John Lewis portrait.